Hey all, here are OS Reviews. As the 2021 refresh of the iMac with the fast M1 processor from Apple starts hitting the market, I thought it would be a good opportunity to take a closer look at a retro iMac and kind of see how far we've come, as well as is something like this still usable after all these years. So more specifically, this is the late 2006 version of the iMac, and it has this polycarbonate frame matching the design language of other Apple products like iPods and MacBooks back in the day. However, in a sense, this design has kind of come back. The latest iMacs have gone back to having a white front, including the bezels, uh, similar to this one from all these years ago. After years of using a black bezel instead, which some folks preferred, shows that if you've been around for long enough, design tends to be recycled and seasonal, almost like fashion or music. Anyways, with this iMac, it's kind of hard to believe that it's almost 15 years old, so time really does fly. Starting with a quick recap of some of the specs on this unit, it is one of the first generation of iMacs that came with Intel processors. It was a pretty significant upgrade compared to the earlier 2006 models that came with a single core processor versus this one that had a Intel Core 2 Duo and clocked at 2.16 gigahertz, some of the fastest computing you could get at the time. And it came by default with one gigabyte of DDR2 RAM. However, the computer is upgradable to up to four gigs of RAM and it came with OS 10.X or or Mac OS Tiger, which actually we are still running on this particular machine, and we'll show how that has held up, what apps work, and what doesn't work quite as well. But the computer can be upgraded up to 10.7 for Mac OS Lion and came in three sizes, the largest 24-inch model, this one here is a 20-inch model in the middle, and there was an even smaller 17-inch version as well. The middle sibling here at 20 inches retailed for $1,500, which is actually still competitive with how a iMac is priced today. Uh, however, in terms of picking up this particular unit, you can find it in a lot of thrift stores or even uh, eBay, and if you shop around, it usually sits at around 50 bucks. We can't expect too much at this price, and so most Mostly it's for fun or if you're looking to, for a collectible item. All of the screens on iMacs have been quite good, especially for their age. Even this version that has a traditional TFT LCD panel has viewing angles of around 170 degrees. So it's quite surprising for a non-IPS display, but we can basically look at it from various angles and see how the colors don't really wash out. In fact, everything still looks quite accurate for what it is. And again, the full HD 1080p resolution means that it still provides plenty of sharpness when it comes to viewing back most content. Other notable additions include a iSight camera, the webcam on the top, which we've come to expect. It came built in with Wi-Fi as well as Bluetooth, so you can connect it to wireless keyboards, mouse, and speakers, just like modern computers. And on the edge, something you no longer see in the newest iMacs, there is a optical DVD reader and writer. So you're able to watch movies just by popping it in. And then turning things over to the back, we see that design from the time, which was that fusion between the polycarbonate plastic, which is having this acrylic shell over it that looks a little bit translucent at certain edges, uh, along with a aluminum stand part so that has some added durability, adds a bit more of a premium touch to the overall design. The hinge also allows you to still position the display at some various angles, tilting it upwards and downwards. I.O. on older computers in general is an area that is a strength, such as three USB Type A ports. There is uh, two firewire ports along with a ethernet port if you don't want to use wi-fi and then a display port along with a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary port if you wanted to connect it to external wired speakers the middle section of course houses the power cable which uh, still is something that we see today but don't be fooled by the kind of overall very elegant and clean look of the design because this iMac is still really heavy weighing over 22 pounds i can't deny that this 2006 iMac still looks quite impressive uh, when you are looking at it. In terms of the thickness, it's of course thicker than modern iMacs, but also not too ridiculous for something, again, 15 years old. Although the newest generation iMacs are again using a white bezel on the front, it is worth noting that these 2021 iMacs are coated by a layer of glass, which is definitely more resistant to wear and tear compared to plastic, which can scratch a bit more easily and over time might be more prone to yellowing, but still looks again very good in terms of the design. Now on the very bottom of the iMac, by the way, is the stereo speakers that are built on in, and 
sound is an area that Apple has always prioritized and done really well, and in fact, it's perhaps an area where I was the most taken aback when I reused this computer and listened to just some music, watched back a YouTube video, because these speakers are still super immersive and loud. Better sounding than most desktops and even laptops that we have here today. Uh, one of the other clever parts of the design is they claim that because it's firing downwards, it's again hard to block, but also it will slightly echo off the surface of a desk and bounce, and giving you a bit more of amplified sound. Taking a closer look at the performance and software, again this is the original OS X 10.4. The general navigation in terms of opening up a limited number of programs and just system navigation, it still feels overall good enough, albeit it is missing some of the more fancy animations and newer features that macOS has added over the years. Now one thing I do like about this display, aside from overall having good viewing angles and good colors, is it's a matte display. So that is one benefit of not having anything covering over it, so even if there's a light that's shining across it, you can see how it's not casting too much reflections compared to if it was covered with glass. So overall it makes for a pretty enjoyable media watching experience as a result. Here are some of the wallpapers that came by default with this OS 10.x, uh, you can see that really shows off the vibrancy of this display. If we take a closer look at some of the other uh, built-in applications, we'll do a quick demo of opening up a PDF. So this is a quick um, article or review that we were typing out on the computer. You can see it still opens up relatively quickly. Typing out an essay or just jotting down notes for assignments, it's still an area that uh, for the most part is something that this Core 2 Duo can handle. Zooming in and zooming out, we can see is still overall pretty responsive, surprisingly. Another document or really review that I was trying to type out on the machine and it didn't have any problems of course just keeping up as a word processor. So you have a basic game chess is built on end. There's a calculator app or really widget that you're able to use. Uh, very standard utility stuff. There is also a dictionary. There's also a garage band that has been pre-built on in uh, that allows you to actually uh, play around and create some small maybe audio loops and even adjust the properties of the piano keys to lower versus higher. iTunes, of course, built on in, allowing you to also sync with iPhones and iPods back in the day, and other things like a photo booth just allows you to take images, or really selfies, uh, with that front-facing camera, and Safari was the built-in web browser, although we'll talk about some of those limitations in terms of browsing later in this video. Two other notable built-in apps include also a comic book editor. Of course, on this particular model, if you're trying to do any serious video editing, it really won't be advisable because of the super aging hardware and uh, rendering files which just take a really long time compared to newer computers. But for things that are lighter, like maybe touching up just a simple photo, uh, that can still work okay. Basic games that are built on in, the style that you can play, and other ones that you can expect to still handle on this machine require less heavy animations because of the built-in Intel graphics. Uh, so things that are more lightweight, maybe a lower graphic setting of Minecraft can still work, but anything too graphically demanding, of course don't expect this to be really a modern gaming computer. Now moving into the web browsing performance. Now this is a part that gets a bit more tricky because unfortunately things have been definitely outdated since this version of macOS is now almost a decade out of date. So if you are using the built-in Safari browser, even if you try to update Safari, um, you'll see that there's going to be a lot of error messages that says the certificate is um, no longer allowing you to maybe safely visit certain websites. Some pages just to not really render correctly unless you click on accept permissions and it can still be a bit tricky. Certain kind of elements of the page, as you can see there, don't really get rendered in the proper way anymore. Mac OS 10.4, you actually aren't able to download alternatives like Chrome. It's actually not supported on here. So the most modern up-to-date browser that you can use if you're still using this Mac with the original version of the OS 10.4 is something called 10.4 Fox. And at the very least, this browser is still currently supported here in 2021 with any pages that you may want to load. Everything is still showing up correctly. It may not be the fastest in the world compared to, again, newer computers, but it certainly works. So if I tap something like iMac, let's say G5, and then tap on search, it will just use 
Google to quickly search that up. Simple pages, like again, checking the news or weather, things like that can still open up, everything still loads. Even if it's not instantaneous, it's really not too shabby. Again, for something from 15 years ago using wireless internet, it is done surprisingly well, I'd say. We can also jump into a more complex page like The Verge and see how that uh, does just by opening it up again. Uh, by upgrading this computer to have three gigs of RAM in our particular case definitely has helped it, I'd say, in the area of multitasking. If you're using it with just the original one gig, then it certainly would be quite low and you would probably only want to open one or two tabs at a time. But with three, you're able to still hold, let's say, five or ten tabs and jump between them and everything still will uh, be kept open in the background. So again, a page like The Verge is pretty complex in terms of having lots of videos and ads, but overall it's still loading along here just fine, just taking a few seconds longer, but really not bad. As you can see, their scrolling still feels pretty smooth, and I didn't really encounter any instances where the entire machine would freeze or anything like that, so impressive. That's one area where macOS and Linux-powered computers have always been very efficient in terms of the hardware and software optimization. If I was using this Intel Core 2 Duo on Windows 10 today, I would probably not get the same experience. It would be much more choppy. Now, if we tried to load back something like YouTube and watch a video, uh, it's not going to be the best experience in the world. It will take significantly longer to fully load a video and do expect more drop frames and the fact that you should probably only watch videos at around 480p or maximum 720p for it to still be smooth, even though the display can, again, support up to full HD or 1080p resolution, but streaming back 1080p videos uh, using this 10 for Fox browser still seems a little bit sluggish at times. So that's the slight con here is if you're getting this to watch back streaming videos, whether it's from YouTube or Netflix, it's no longer going to be the best experience, unfortunately. But for static web pages, for reading back the news, searching things up, that still is perfectly fine. But uh, definitely it's not going to give you the you know fastest frame rates. You can see how things are a little bit choppy at times. Although we have been automatically bumped up to 1080p now, uh, that might also explain some of the reduced animation speed. If we tried to drop it to 720p, that should also do a bit better. So the takeaway is, again, the speakers are just really impressive, again, for something of its age. It's just so full and gets really loud but never too shrill or sharp and uh, just has also a nice touch of bass as well, surprisingly. And now time for a quick demo of watching back a video. Let's just pop it into the side-loading DVD drive and then it will automatically suck it in and playing back the content. Remains an excellent application of where this older iMac still holds up quite well. And then when you're done, you can also just eject the uh, DVD just by tapping on that. Uh, just make sure you catch it in time, but it's a pretty cool action compared to a lot of the manual loading DVD slots in, let's say, laptops that was more common back in the day. So um, overall, again, a great application that uh, still works here. So that is more or less it as far as our revisited retro review of this late 2006 Apple iMac. This is the 20-inch version, and again, it's crazy to think that we're now looking at a machine that's 15 years old, but it's still holding up in surprisingly quite a few ways. I would recommend using it for just news, things like that, along with uh, editing documents like Office or text documents or reading back PDFs, and the third would probably be using it as a DVD player. Anyways, this has been kind of a nostalgic look back at this uh, early Mac, the polycarbonate late 2006 edition, and overall, let us know if you've owned one in the comments below what your memories of it were and if there's any other use cases that you would still consider uh, for today so anyways thanks for watching here at os reviews that's been the revisited review of the imac late 2006 edition